Salami slicing tactics. It's not a method for cutting deli meats. It's a military strategy that China has used in the South China Sea. This salami represents the sea. Each slice is a portion of the region that China has claimed over decades, often angering its neighbors who hold competing claims. And the U.S. missed the moment to intervene, in part because it was focused on working with China to mediate other global issues in North Korea and Iran. In that time, China occupied various coral reefs and in some cases turned them into artificial islands. Today, it controls 27 outposts across the sea, largely in disputed areas. Which is why this mostly chopped up salami represents the state of the sea now that the U.S. has taken a more critical stance against China. So what is it doing to counter Beijing? The South China Sea is central to the Indo-Pacific, where 60% of the world's population lives. Trillions of dollars worth of trade passes through the sea each year. According to the China Power Project by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, one-third of all global trade transits the sea, making many countries economically dependent on the region. It's critical to the U.S. economy because America imports around 90% of its advanced microchips from Taiwan. And roughly 14% of American maritime trade transited the sea in 2016. But in that same year, over 64% of China's maritime trade passed through, $874 billion. China is the largest exporter of goods in the region, and having control over more of the sea would potentially give the PRC a lot of power over the economies of the U.S. and all of China's neighbors. It is because national security is no longer simply about territorial defense. Economic security is national security. And that's why the disputes in the region often focus on one big jargony term, exclusive economic zones. EEZs are areas in the sea where a country has jurisdiction over the resources. They generally extend around 200 nautical miles. And because countries like Vietnam and the Philippines rely on access to these areas, China's encroachment has posed a problem for their security and economies. So you hear the fishermen complaining of Chinese aggressive action and denying them the ability to, to fish in our own exclusive economic zone, in our own waters. China says it has historical claims to almost the entire South China Sea, based on a map from 1947 that illustrates dashes cutting through the majority of the sea. Fittingly, it's called the Nine Dash Line. But that line cuts through EEZ claims for five other countries. To try and solidify its claim to the sea, China has been incrementally occupying various islands to slowly change the status quo, aka salami slicing. It began this process in the 1970s when it took control of the Paracel Islands from Vietnam. In 1995, China occupied Mischief Reef, which was claimed by the Philippines and Vietnam. And in 2012, it took Scarborough Shoal, just 120 nautical miles west of the Philippine island of Luzon. Then, China started to build on the islands, which concerned the U.S., and prompted President Xi Jinping to make this assurance in 2015. We are committed to maintaining peace and stability in the South China Sea, and China does not intend to pursue militarization. Not long after, the U.S. says the PRC broke its promise. China now has 20 outposts in the Paracel Islands and seven in the Spratlys, several of which have aircraft hangars, missiles, military jamming equipment, and other advanced systems. Throughout this process, some U.S. officials expressed concern. They said they repeatedly told the Chinese they were making a mistake, driving countries in the region closer to the U.S. militarily and hurting China's ties with Washington. And in 2016, something critical happened. The Philippines brought China to an international tribunal over its occupation of Filipino territories. And the Philippines won. The Hague said that China's claims are illegal and all the islands it had built would not expand its exclusive economic zone. But China boycotted the tribunal and refused to recognize the ruling. The US has taken steps to counter China in two ways boosting its military presence, and strengthening diplomatic relationships. 
America and the Philippines have been mutual defense allies since 1951, which means if either country is attacked, the other must come to its aid. In 2014, the U.S. and the Philippines signed the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. The EDCA gave America access to five military bases in the Philippines, where the U.S. can build infrastructure and rotate troops. However, the two countries' relations have teetered over the years. The previous president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, briefly strengthened relationships with China, which in turn weakened the Philippines' ties to the U.S. But the shift was short-lived, and by 2021, the Philippines changed course. This year, EDCA expanded to include four more bases, where the two countries ran their largest military drills in decades. If it's an issue for the Philippines uh, in terms of international relations, uh, it's an issue for the United States because we're a mutual defense treaty partner. And we will come to the aid of the Philippines if they're attacked. And I think it's as simple as that. In response to this growing cooperation, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said it would escalate tensions and endanger peace and stability in the region. Well, there's a superpower struggle. There's the geopolitical competition, U.S. and China. But China is violating our sovereignty and sovereign rights. And regardless of there is a competition, we have an issue with China in that respect. The U.S. also regularly conducts freedom of navigation operations in the South China Sea. Phonops are meant to challenge China's claims in the sea by demonstrating that the United States will fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows. The PRC calls these phonops illegal. Still, the U.S. has strengthened its relationships with other nearby nations and encouraged some to run patrols through the sea as well. In a recent call with General Secretary Nguyen Phu Trung of Vietnam, he and Biden discussed how to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific. China and Vietnam have long held diplomatic relations, and Vietnam's economy relies on this relationship. But like the Philippines, Vietnam has also faced difficulties operating in its own exclusive economic zone due to China's encroachment and harassment. This gave the U.S. an opportunity to strengthen its ties with yet another country in the South China Sea. We greatly value the relationships we have with all of these countries in the region. And there's one constant among all of them, and that is we respect their sovereignty. And that's where the PRC, I believe, is missing the mark, because they, they want to operate on their own set of rules and not respect the sovereignty of the other existing nations in the region.